the, the first is Paulo Alves uh, from UCLA. Uh, and he's an uh, assistant professor of physics and astronomy at, at, well, at UCLA. So without further ado, please. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Slava. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd first like to uh, thank uh, the organizers for the invitation to participate and to speak uh, to you at this very exciting workshop. So I'm going to talk to you, or I'd like to talk to you about a problem that I think is, is quite general, uh, that of uh, distilling or, or, or uh, extracting reduced physical descriptions, reduced or simplified physical descriptions of, uh, of, uh, of, of physical systems from a source of high fidelity data. In particular, I'm going to focus on uh, uh, high fidelity uh, simulations or first principle simulations. Um, so, um, uh, and uh, as a plasma physicist, I'm going to tell you this through the lens of, a, of, a, of plasma physics. Uh, be before I do so, let me, let me remind some of you what, what plasmas are and, and what some of the exciting questions in plasma physics are. So, uh, plasmas are ionized gases, uh, hot ionized gases of, of, of charged particles, the, of electrons and ions, and they interact uh, collectively through electric and magnetic fields. And this, this state of matter pervades the universe. In fact, it makes up most of the observable universe. And some of the most spectacular manifestations of plasma physics can be uh, actually found in the high energy universe. So in uh, like uh, stellar explosions or the launching of relativistic outflows of plasma from the centers of active galaxies. Some, of, some important puzzles in plasma physics is that when we look at these objects, we see, we, see them, we see them shine across the electromagnetic spectrum. They're also known to be sources of the most energetic particles in the universe. So one of the big challenges in plasma physics is understanding the process by which these systems produce the radiation that we observe and accelerate the particles that we, that we, that we see. Here in the, on Earth, in, in the laboratory, uh, there are many uh, uh, exciting applications uh, and, and dream, uh, dr dream applications of, of plasma physics. Uh, these include uh, uh, developing compact particle accelerators, uh, but probably most, most notably for, for people, most widely known uh, for people outside of plasma physics, it's uh, controlling nuclear fusion. Okay, and so uh, plasmas are highly uh, um, display and exhibit uh, very complex dynamics, and so understanding how to control the dynamics to to uh, achieve plasmas to uh, uh, do what you want in these different applications is an outstanding challenge. At the core of all these problems is indeed the fact that particles exhibit multi-scale dynamics. There are important microphysical processes; these are small-scale processes that occur in, in plasmas that control what happens at, uh, to, to plasma dynamics at vastly larger scales, at what I would call system size, size scales. Okay, so this depends on the problem one, one is interested, but this is the so-called multi-scale uh, multi problem. So this has been a tremendous challenge for uh, uh, computational uh, modeling in plasma physics. This is also a very general problem in many other areas of, of science. And uh, uh, it is in this context that developing reduced descriptions that capture the essence of how microphysical uh, processes uh, interplay and uh, dictate what happens at global scales is, is a, a very important challenge. Now, there have been decades, I mean, there's a long history of, of work in developing these, these uh, uh, reduced descriptions from uh, using traditional analytical tools, but these have their uh, limitations. Uh, often they, they uh, are only valid in, in very narrow regimes of, of validity or, or in very idealized scenarios. And this has motivated myself and, and, and many others to explore uh, if there are ways that we can learn from data to to derive other uh, improved reduced descriptions. I specialize in a, in, in a certain type of uh, numerical simulation of plasmas. It is called, uh, I, I specialize in these so-called particle and cell simulations of plasmas that provide the first principles description of plasma dynamics. So these, these, uh, these simulations, uh, great, you can see my cursor here. These simulations describe particles as, uh, plasmas as a collection of numerical particles that self-consistently self interact with each other through electric and magnetic fields. So these simulations essentially solve the equation of motion for individual particles uh, which move according to the Lorentz force, and we use Maxwell's equations to calculate 
the electric and magnetic fields that they self consistently produce. So to the extent that quantum mechanical effects can be neglected, this is indeed a first principles description of a plasma, and this is a great source of, of uh, a great starting point from which reduced descriptions can be, can be built. Okay, and so I've been motivated to understand if uh, we could take advantage of machine learning uh, techniques to distill reduced descriptions from, these, from this type of, of, of data. And ultimately, can we learn about uh, what good, uh, what these reduced descriptions look like? So I would like these models to be interpretable, to interface with theorists. And uh, I would also uh, ultimately want these models to uh, be computationally uh, more advantageous so that we could tackle these difficult multi-scale problems. There is, now there, there have been, uh, this is, there's also uh, in itself a long history of, of uh, uh, trying to, dis to solve this problem, distilling uh, uh, um, uh, governing equations or, or distilling reduced models from, from data. Um, uh, but I personally have been uh, inspired by recent work using sparse optimization methods to do this, this job. In particular, this, this work that uh, uh, I, I believe began in, uh, by, by a group uh, at the University of Washington by uh, Professor uh, Nathan Kutz uh, and, and Stephen Brunton and others that s formulated this problem of g finding uh, simple uh, parsimonious governing equations from data as a sparse optimization problem. And here I'm showing you an example in the context of plasma physics. So here we see different snapshots of data of what I would say is prototypical nonlinear plasma dynamics. So what we're, what we're seeing here are, is, is dynamics in, a, in an abstract space, in a space that called phase space. So we have here uh, position in this axis, we have velocity in this axis. And this, this red cloud here represents the density of plasma in, in, this, in this phase space. And as you can see, at, as, as these different uh, uh, these different snapshots, we see the emergence of uh, we, we see highly nonlinear dynamics. The, the, these vortices developing, and and all, all of this interesting stuff uh, developing here. We know from the kinetic theory of plasmas that the that the governing equation that describes the dynamics in the space is the so-called Vlasov equation. It's essentially a collisionless Boltzmann equation. It, this is kinetic theory of, of plasmas. And so, in order to validate these approaches, to understand to what extent we can extract models from from data, I've been to see if uh, under what conditions can I extract known laws from from uh, from this type of data. So. The, the way this is done is, is, is very, very simple. So we're interested in understanding how this quantity evolves, this density of, of, of uh, plasma in phase space. This is also called the distribution function. One can estimate time derivatives of this, uh, of this distribution function at, uh, at, at different points in your, in your data. Uh, and you then uh, uh, pose the problem of finding the governing equation of this of the evolution of this time uh, of this uh, distribution function as a sparse optimization problem. So you construct a library of candidate terms, some, a, a space of possibilities for the, the right hand side of this equation, and you use sparse optimization methods to find which are what is the minimal subset of terms that uh, describes the data. It turns out that this sparsity is a very good heuristic to, to, to uncover these, these, uh, uh, the, true, the true laws. And so here I'm showing that on, on the right hand side we see the, the true Vlasov equation. It's got these two terms over here. And uh, as a result of this procedure, we recover exactly those two, those two terms. But they have different uh, large errors associated with them. This comes from the fact that there is a, a lot of noise in this data. These are particle-based simulations, and there's, there's noise in this uh, data associated with discrete particle noise. Uh, this is what motivated us to, to develop something uh, uh, different that other groups independently uh, all have also uh, r quickly realized, um, which is to uh, reformulate this problem of discovering PDEs. Uh, instead of discovering them in their differential form, we discover them in their integral form. So what, what happens is that instead of uh, so, uh, taking these measurements from data at pointwise locations, we look at volumes in the data, and we can uh, essentially uh, uh, solve exactly the same problem, but uh, uh, seek uh, the integral form of these partial differential equations. And this has much better uh, noise, uh, robust, uh, uh, much better properties in terms of robustness to noise. And we're able to recover these equations with far better accuracy. I, I have to uh, rush a little bit here, but 
we have taken this to, to much more complicated uh, problems. We've actually uh, used this to discover the full hierarchy of known reduced uh, models from plasma physics, and in particular the fluid equations of plasma physics. These are equations that describe statistical averages of that kinetic equation. And, uh, and so by looking at progressively more complicated pro problems, we've really tried to stress test these, these, these methods. Okay? And uh, what's, what's quite nice here is that we've been able to uh, show that we can recover something uh, uh, these, these textbook um, uh, reduced descriptions. In particular, uh, a widely used one is this so-called uh, single fluid magnetohydrodynamics, all from the data of first principle simulations. I do not have time to talk about this here, but I would love to talk with people uh, uh, in, in, in question sessions um, that uh, a critical part when, you, when one is developing these reduced uh, models is that uh, there is the so-called closure problem that appears, and tackling this closure problem is one area that I think is extremely exciting, um, uh, application of, of machine learning. In a, in a nut, just to briefly summarize, um, so the vision is that there are, in, plasma, in, in the concrete case of plasma physics, but I'm, I'm confident this is, this is the same case in many other fields of science, there are um, abundant high-fidelity numerical simulations for different uh, problems that are tailored for different pro problems. I'm, I'm convinced that these data-driven uh, dis discovery frameworks can, uh, can help us distill uh, reduced uh, descriptions, important reduced descriptions that we have identified a long time as being, as being important, and we can incorporate these in more macroscopic models of, of systems. So we're always keeping this very closely connected with theory, and the um, hope is that this will improve our ability to do multi-scale modeling of these plasmas. There are a number of, of challenges that, I, that I'd love to talk to uh, uh, people about uh, later, but uh, I see my time is up, so thank you, thank you for your attention. I would love to take questions. It's uh, uh, in some way we are. Uh, there's a lot of information that is encoded in here. So this li so the, this library of candidate terms is strongly informed by domain knowledge of the problem. So that library uh, design. Th this this whole this whole process this this whole this whole procedure hinges on the fact that we can construct these this library the space of possibilities in a in a, an appropriate way and uh, this is indeed one of the challenges uh, when one wants to take this out into the wild to try to reduce uh, to develop reduced descriptions of problems that we have a poor understanding of this is a, a critical area and I have my, some thoughts on how one one uh, overcomes this I I, I just have a uh, follow up on that yes I think there's a very interesting your answer on her asking based on the case that you're doing machine learning but you have an idea of what the model you're trying to work with or at least the class of models you're trying to work with mm -hmm. versus a situation where you know nothing yes. and I think there's going to be an interesting discussion today but I want to go to a second point how you said by going by integration you can deal with the noise how do you know what's noise what's noise what's not noise how do you put that into your learning procedure because there's always this question of dealing with noise and getting wrong answers how yeah. No, no, no. This is a very, very uh, uh, good question, and and one that I, I, I cannot give a, a few uh, a short answer on. But in a nutshell, in in this particular case, what I I, I have not been rigorous in the, what I what I just called noise. There there are there are different. Okay, let, let me just say there are different sources of, of error in these numerical simulations. There are discretization errors. Okay, and uh, I was kind of sweeping that up under the rug, calling that noise. This one. one could be more careful in doing these things. Remember, these are coming from uh, numerical simulations, so being aware of, of discretization errors, intrinsically numerical errors, uh, there, there are ways of, of uh, being more careful with that. Uh, um, it, these, I, I also, uh, but the main thing I, I alluded to was that there's noise coming from the fact that we're dealing with a, a finite number of particles, right? And, um, and even, even there, uh, 
what, what can I say about this? These, these governing equations are exact conservation laws, and so these distribution functions, this, this F here, this density, even if it is spiky, even, even if it's spiky, if we're dealing with delta functions, this should be uh, uh, exact, okay? But numerically, this is not so. One, one cannot estimate the derivatives of, of these very sharp uh, functions. So uh, th there are, have been a, a few things where I've, I've taken a, a bit of liberty in, in uh, uh, um, of, of, of not talking about all, all of the details here. Um, so here, uh, when it comes to noise in these, in these systems, uh, understanding what is noise, what is not noise. I have a good understanding of what it is in this in this case. This is these are actually clean simulations. The challenge here comes from dealing with the numerics of uh, of, uh, of 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 this type of data. Yes, please. Yeah. So I have one very trivial question and one a little bit more complicated. The trivial question is how do you get the boundary conditions and the initial initial conditions? You're writing a differential equation, but you're not telling us about the initial and boundary conditions. Yeah, well, uh, th that, that was question. not that. That was not uh, the the goal. Or that was not. But the can objective. you can you get those from your? Uh, uh, yes, the, uh, in principle, uh, one could one could uh, get this. Yes. So if we take uh, measurements at uh, boundaries, at certain locations, at these at these special locations where you can boundary conditions are, are imposed, we could um, in principle recover that. But that was not the the goal here. Yeah. Okay. So this was a trivial question. Yes. The not trivial is about 15 years ago there was a paper in Physical Review Letters. And it, the paper was called Physics is Hard. And they showed that actually inquiring from the orbit of Earth around the Sun in order to discover Newton's law, 1 over R square, is an NP complete problem. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, uh, and let's talk next two days about it, how, do you, how does the AI deal with NP complete problems? We know that quantum computing is not bringing anything new. I, well, no, no. I, I, uh, well, the, yeah. The, this we we were able to. Uh, so, uh, I, I first would have to look at that a little bit more more carefully. This this paper. Uh, it's an empty complete. Uh, I, I would like to understand the formulation of 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 that problem exactly. In what sense, uh, how exactly it was formulated? 